This rather strange and old looking contraption is called a food mill. And after watching this video, you'll know how it works and whether one belongs in your kitchen. Hello and welcome to I Want to Cook. My name is Chef Matt and this channel is all about helping you be a better cook no matter your skill level. And today we are talking about the humble food mill. So what is this thing? Well, first of all, if this thing looks like a relic from a bygone era, it kind of is. Uh, these were invented in the 1920s by the Foley Manufacturing Company, and this is an old Foley model that I got at the thrift store. I think I paid like seven bucks for it, but these are still made to this day. Miro makes one of these that is very similar to this, and there's also a really nice OXO one. The Miro model that is similar to this one retails for about $40, while while the OXO is a little bit more. And of course, there are different models that you can buy. And while the idea of this thing is about a century old, they're still really useful today. Well, what is a food mill? You can kind of think of it as a rudimentary food processor in that it takes food in one form and transforms it into another. So here's how it works. You have this hand cranked blade you see here. And what happens is you put food into this bin and you crank this blade. And what it does is it pushes food through this sieve. And then out the bottom, you get like a puree or juice. Now these are mostly used for soft fruits and vegetables. And the beautiful thing about it is that you can put them in skins, seeds and all. You don't have to skin them. You don't have to de-seed them. You just put them in this, you crank it, and out comes a nice juice or puree, all while leaving the skins and seeds behind. Now this particular model just has one bottom, but there are some that you can actually change the bottom. So if you want, let's say a finer mesh or a uh, more coarse mesh, you can do that. You just pop a different plate in the bottom and that gives you some flexibility for, for what you're going to make. Now, as for the blade itself, it is held in place by this spring-loaded uh, pin here. And then when you're ready to clean it, you just unscrew this pin here, you pop the blade out, and then you can clean it. Uh, they're kind of a hassle to clean, depending on how fine the sieve is. But, you know, soap, a scrubber, a brush, it's really not too bad. So basically what this thing is, is it's a sieve with like a mechanical pusher. Okay, so why would you want to use one of these in the modern era where we have food processors, we have blenders, etc.? Well, again, a food processor can definitely do some of the things that this can, but what it can't do is the most important part potentially, and that is straining. So because this has this sieve, what happens is you put the food in and as you crank it, it pushes that out. So even if you made something in a food processor, let's say apples for applesauce, you would still have to push them through a sieve so that you get that nice, fine consistency. Along with making homemade applesauce, another popular use for these is when making mashed potatoes. And to make mashed potatoes, what you would do is boil some potato pieces, put them in the bottom here, crank this, and then out would come the nice riced potatoes, all while leaving the skins behind. In that way, it's similar to the potato ricer that I demonstrated a long time ago, that you put the potato pieces into a canister and then you push it and out come that rice potato. The benefit of this is that you can work in larger batches. Those potato ricers aren't very big, but this can hold a lot and you can get even bigger versions of this. Another great use for this is tomatoes. You could put whole cooked tomatoes in, skins and seeds and all, crank this, and then you have like a tomato sauce. So let me demonstrate this for you. So first I'm gonna demonstrate with some mashed potatoes. I had cut some potatoes and boiled them earlier, and as you can see, these still have their skin on. So what we're gonna do is just take these potato pieces, we'll put them right into the top of the food mill here. Another handy feature of these is they have these legs that fit right over the bowl or pot, whatever you're using. This is the pot that I cooked my potatoes in. Now I'm just reusing it to rice these potatoes. So we've got our potatoes in. Now all we have to do is crank. And what happens is, see, it's pushing those potatoes right through the bottom. Now you might have to kind of back this up and turn it around, 
but slowly but surely, it is ricing these potatoes. This is all there is to it. You just crank this and then you add more potatoes as you go. So let me show you the result here of what we have. See, you have this beautiful, nice, fluffy potatoes. And then from here, you know, you can add milk and butter and all the good stuff. So in this case, the food mill made these beautiful mashed potatoes all while leaving the skins in the canister. Let me clean this out and I'll demo how to make applesauce with this. Okay, we'll do the same thing with apples. And I just am using, again, the same pan that I boiled the apples in. And full disclosure, this is actually the first time I've used one of these for applesauce. So uh, let's, let's see how it goes. We'll just kind of dump these apples in here. I just kind of quartered these. Again, I left the seeds, the skin, and even the stems on. Now I'm using Gala apples for these. I think you can also use Macintosh apples. Uh, those make really good applesauce as well. We have a culinary merry-go-round right here. Okay, I've been cranking for a couple minutes here. Let me show you the results. So as you can see with this, we got most of those apples pureed and those skins are all on the bottom. But check this out. We have applesauce. And from here, you know, you can flavor it however you want. You could add some cinnamon, some sugar, but we just turned those cooked apples into a nice applesauce puree. Mm. That is amazing. That is the best applesauce I have ever had. That's crazy. It's like high definition applesauce. Mm. So that's how one of these food meals work. Basically soft fruits, cooked vegetables, you wouldn't want to put something like an uncooked potato in this, just like with our potato ricer. You, you know, you need to cook them first, make them nice and soft so that these can be strained, they can be pushed through this sieve. Now, do you need one of these? Well, as with any kitchen tool, it obviously depends on your needs case. These are really great for making homemade baby food. So if you want to make your own purees, these are really ideal for this. It's kind of a one-stop shop. You, you cook the food that you're going to uh, make for your baby, you load it in here, crank it, and then you have these nice, beautiful purees. If you're really into canning, that's another great use for these. Again, with like jams and things like that, with fruit, these are really, really good. And homemade mashed potatoes. If you don't want to use another a device, like a potato ricer or a mixer, uh, this is a, a good use for this. And what's nice about this is it's really simple. It doesn't require any electricity, although I should note that there are electric food mills available, but this is about as simple as it gets. You know, you can take this camping even, you don't have to plug it in, you just crank it. So if your needs or culinary plans fit into some of that criteria, then yes, one of these could be really useful. And honestly, they're kind of just cool looking too. I mean, you could even kind of hang it from a wall and I don't know, maybe have some culinary art. But let me know, do you use one of these? And if you do, what do you use it for? I would love to know. I know there's just a lot of different uses for it. And I know that some of you are really creative out there. So I'd love to hear what you use one of these for too. But I hope this little food mill tutorial helped. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Welcome to my kitchen. I am so glad that you are here. Until next time, I hope you want to cook. Now, I'm gonna get back to that applesauce.